The mainstream media are excited because they have audio of Trump sharing the contents of those classified boxes, which reveal that America was planning a war with Iran. Guess what they're more excited about? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards elaborate hats and fantastic shirts. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now. We make this content every day. We want you to see it all. Otherwise, you're not going to get a take that interrogates the mainstream narratives on a complex and sometimes controversial subject like Donald Trump and the attempts to bring him down. Donald Trump, it has now been somewhat proven, let me know in the comments if you agree, did share the contents of those classified boxes. I mean, you can hear him doing it and admitting all the time they shouldn't be doing this but have a look in there look in there isn't it also significant and interesting that the contents of those boxes reveal that there was a plan to go to war with iran what do you think is going to have a bigger impact on your life if you're in the uk or can be in the uk between july the 14th and july the 17th join us for our live in real life community festival event wim hof vandana shiva hiron gracie cali means an attempt to bring about the kind of society that we regularly discuss here. If you can come, come. There's a link in the description. Let's get on with this analysis. Let's listen for ourselves. See if Donald Trump really did share classified information. It does seem like he did. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news. We have obtained what is expected to be a central piece of the government's case against Donald Trump. The actual audio recording. recording. Be good if it was an audio recording. Free play, boys. Free play, boys. See how they run. See how they run. Of the former president talking as if he's showing a highly classified document on U.S. war plans against Iran with people not clear to even know it exists, let alone what's in it. They're missing the point once again. Doesn't everyone basically think that presidents and high-ranking politicians have access to classified information and in private communicate this information? Don't we all just basically assume that Trump revealed to us the essential nature of power, as Dave Chappelle memorably said in his SNL speech? He was the president that said, you know all the stuff you think we're doing in there? We are doing that stuff in there. I know the system is rigged because I use it. I said, God damn. <laughs> So once again, they're doubling down on the idea that Trump has been caught out sharing the contents of a box that's ultimately meant to be classified, that he said he kept golf shirts in and golf tees and all sorts of golf stuff in. Isn't it more interesting, more significant, more of a condemnation of systemic power and the state of the world we're in, that within those boxes were the plans for the US military to engage Iran in war? Isn't that more likely to affect your life, my life, the state of the world? Why are we talking about the person personality rather than the principle. Why are we talking about minor transgressions like the revelation of classified information, which are, you know, if that's wrong, that's wrong. Let me know in the comments if you think it's wrong. But is it as significant as US plans for war with Iran? What over the past 20 years has had a bigger impact on you? The revelation of state secrets, think of the most memorable one, WikiLeaks, which just told you there were loads of illegal murders that went on in all those Middle Eastern wars. Or has it been the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war, wars reaching back, the current war, whether it's financially how it impacts you, emotionally, spiritually, the fact that it kills people all over the world, Americans and of other nations. What's the bigger story here and why are the mainstream media not interrogating this aspect of the story? Let us know in the comments. In a moment, only on CNN, you will hear what jurors will hear one day. CNN is just trying to make itself sound super important. Like Anderson, we have obtained these important documents that basically don't really mean anything, really. I mean, you all know that Trump's doing stuff like that, don't you? Do you think that Joe Biden's not doing enough stuff like that? Didn't you hear the text message where Hunter Biden says, I'm sat here with my dad, you better pay me properly, Zheng, or whatever. You saw that. We all know that there's such a thing called nepotism. We know that there's such a thing called cronyism. We know that Nancy Pelosi presumably has access to information that make her husband's investments more successful. You you can't do someone for being corrupt in a corrupt system. It's the wrong problem. I mean, the fact is, last time we heard an audio recording of him, you remember what he was saying then? In a way, he's improved. At least he's talking about politics and stuff rather than the P word that it was last time. You will clearly hear the former president as he is speaking to several people. These are bad, sick people. That, but was, that was your coup, you know. 
that against you. That's well, it started they, right at the like beginning. Like when Millie's talking about, oh, you were going to try to do a kid. No, they, they were trying right. to do that before you even were sworn in. That's right. Trying no, yeah. to overthrow yeah. your election. Well, with Millie, uh, let me see that. I'll, I'll show you an example. I'm funny. He's just in a rudimentary way going through those cars. Like, no, that's one of my golf shoes. Oh, no, that's a five iron. Don't need that. Ah, there it is. Millie saying that they want to go to war with Iran. Now, of course, if the agreed upon law is the president's not supposed to reveal classified information, then he's banged to rights, it sounds like, unless that's a very good impersonation of him. But isn't it sort of more interesting, important, epochal, and likely to affect your life, oil prices, stability of the world, if America plan another bloody war in Iran? He said that I wanted to attack Iran. You can hear him doing it. I think you've got him bagged to rights. A man was found next to a murdered body. He had the knife in his hand. 13 witnesses had seen him stab the victim. When the police arrived, he said, I'm glad I killed the bastard. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but... It's off the record. And that should handle it then. That's fine. Off the record. They presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. It's pages long. Look. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's see here. So blatantly going through secrets. Imagine them all spread out on the floor. Secrets here. Oh, but here's another one. <laughs> oh, there's another secret there. Oh, bit of secrets. Isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential yeah. <laughs> secret. I didn't know that they were secret. In the tape, he says that he knows it's confidential. This is secret information. <laughs> look, look at this. You attack. And Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. <laughs> send it, email. No, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner. Yeah, yeah. The pervert. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? It's like exactly how you imagine it. This is the problem with using this to attack Trump. I mean, of course, if there is a legislative angle and he ultimately ends up incarcerated, of course, that's successful. But that's just Trump being Trump. And I feel that the problem that it highlights is, oh, yeah, you know the system that you know is corrupt and you know that there's sort of secret wars that are economically undergirded and then they sell it to you as being a moral humanitarian war. Well, this kind of shows that all happening. And even in the tape, it's sort of almost more damaging to Hillary Clinton because they pretend that they're sort of above all that stuff. We're proper people. We're grown-ups and we're serious. This guy is joking the whole way through it. Everyone does it. I use those loopholes. There wouldn't be a war. It'll be over in 24 hours. You can't attack Trump there. I'm even giving them strategic advice. I'd say that if your agenda is to bring down Trump, don't bring down Trump using stuff we already sort of know about Trump and people have already decided they don't care about. That's the problem. The problem is that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. You're still attacking him on the basis of something that isn't regarded as a problem, but almost an asset. By the way, isn't that incredible? Though? Yeah. I was just saying, because we were talking about it. <laughs> and, you know, he said, he wanted to attack Iran and what? He said, pretty, wow. pretty This was yeah. done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I think probably right, I mean, use this to win an argument. I don't know if you can, Donald. I feel like it's classified. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to... Try to figure out a, a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified yeah. it. Now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now. Still a secret. Oh, this, that's a secret. This is a secret. These are, these are secrets. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> it's like a pajama party of secrets. This is one of my favorite secrets. I like that secret. Which secret shall it be? I'll choose the one to marry me. It's like Sandra D in Greece. I'm saying. And you probably almost didn't believe me, but now you believe me. No, it's, I believe It's you. incredible, right? No, they, hey, bring they some, uh, bring some cokes in, please. Look at that. So in response to the sort of chilling statement that the military industrial complex have never met a war they didn't want. What is Donald Trump's response? Where would he go with that? They've never met a war they didn't want. They are a machine built for war. Their economic model requires war. This is the swamp that you claimed that you would drain. The swamp that everyone, Democrat, liberal, Republican, conservative, traditional or progressive, agrees needs draining. What's Donald's response? Hey, bring some, uh, bring some cokes in, please. I mean, it is, after all, the real thing. We knew about this. You know, CNN first reported that this existed and that Jack Smith's prosecution had it in their hands. But to hear it, I think, really just drives home. That's 
not that important that they're engaging a different sense. You've seen it written down and now you've heard it. Well, what's next? A lunchbox with it on? It's not Jurassic Park merchandise. Either it's corrupt or it isn't corrupt. Either it's significant or it's not significant. No one's going to watch it and go, what? Oh, I like Donald Trump, but now, now that I've heard him rifling through those papers like a mouse, oh, that's put me off him. The reporting on the story reiterates that problem. Why are they not saying, I mean, it's obviously a matter of concern that it appears there are secret plans to go to war with Iran. And of course, there are comparable stories within the Democrat Party and comparable stories of corruption. And obviously, there's no point in us continually focusing on Trump and saying, Trump's worse, Trump's worse, Trump's worse. Because loads of people, about half, think Trump's better. Why not do something about the system itself, whether that's the system of government or the system of media reporting? The issue stems from Trump's apparent frustration with what he claimed was a false narrative being pushed by the press that after losing the 2020 election under the advice of then Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You're always going on about Benjamin Netanyahu. Let it go, Lynn. You're never going to meet him. And the coterie of Iran hawks he'd surrounded himself with, Trump was dangerously close to ordering strikes on Iran that could have triggered full-scale war and had to be talked down from it by Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. But the former president maintained the reality of the situation was the exact opposite. That it was Milley and the Pentagon who were pushing an attack on Iran on a reluctant Trump and that the classified documents he had kept were proof of this. Well, that does seem more likely, doesn't it? And again, as a person that has no belief in the bipartisan system or American globalist corporatist democracy as it's currently set up, it seems to me that the bigger issue is there were plans for a war with Iran that the military industrial complex in the form of General Mark Milley were pushing for rather than the rather unsurprising news that Donald Trump, excuse me, kept a bunch of boxes and showed them to his mates. It's exactly the sort of thing I've always assumed Trump would do. And then have a Coke. When someone says war is inevitable, you go, mm, yeah. <laughs> This comes in the midst of years of ratcheting up tensions between not just Iran and the United States, but maybe more dangerously, Iran and Israel. That is dangerous. The latter's government has been pushing the Biden administration to take a more aggressive posture toward Iran for years. Perhaps the real problem here, as well as taking Trump out as an electoral candidate, is do they see him as a threat? Are they still using that crazy Pied Piper strategy of putting attention on Trump so you can't get any momentum behind DeSantis? I don't know, because I don't consider that to be the most important thing in American political life. What is evidently important is the potential for agitation for another Middle Eastern war after the wreckage, carnage and disaster of the Iraqi war, the Afghanistan war, the current ongoing terrible conflict between Russia and Ukraine, which you don't have to pick a side on because I'm on the side of peace, baby. Check out my shirt. But what we can agree, it seems, is the peace deal was on the table, that Putin was willing to sign it. And you can say that's Russian propaganda. We've got to pick our way through a hell of a lot of propaganda here, and American interests and UK interests agitated for ongoing conflict. Would there be any reason for that? Well, sort of seems like they benefit from it and their entire economic model requires it. Let me know in the comments. The existence of US war plans for Iran suggests it wouldn't take much for Israeli attacks to draw the United States into yet another disastrous war, particularly if Iran retaliates, particularly if it winds up killing Americans in the process, whether intentionally or not. Iran's deepening alliance with Russia could draw Moscow into the war, turning the country into the second front of a global proxy battle between two nuclear superpowers, the United States and Russia, while adding a third nuclear power, Israel, into the volatile mix. Now that's only a take and that's only speculation. But given the current geopolitical tensions, the fact that there is a war between Ukraine and Russia, given that the reporting on that war does seem to contain a great deal of biases, given that it appears there is agitation for a conflict with China around Taiwan and the semiconductors, you have to take this seriously. Not least because there's a box of evidence that Donald Trump is rifling through like his family photo album at a post-wedding do. So tell me, what's more important to you. The fact that Trump has broken the law by taking classified information when he's no longer in office and indeed apparently sharing it with other people or that it contains plans for a future conflict with Iran even including a much more realistic and present danger for escalating and ratcheting up tensions between Israel and Iran. These seem to me to be global problems rather than legal technicalities or illegal technicalities 
or stories that exist well within what we all expect of Donald Trump, whether we like him or not. That's the crucial detail. I think people that love Donald Trump, this is just Trump being Trump. The people that don't like Donald Trump, oh, you bastard. But the reality is, the reality is, there are much more important issues that it appears we're being distracted from. And even in the reporting of this story, why are the mainstream media not interrogating the contents of the boxes and the implications for the world if there is a plan for a war with bloody Iran? But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this one. It's a great interview with Jeff Jeffrey Sachs, who unpacks the current conflict between Ukraine and Russia brilliantly. Or have a look at this one. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe. We make this stuff every day. Remember, you can come to community and join me, Wim Hof, and Vandana Shiva for a fantastic live event. But more important than any of that is that you please stay free.